Well, speaking of the president, he is having lunch with his secretary of state, Mike Pompeo. Uh, this is ahead of, a week ahead of the big summit, just a week from today. Hudson Institute senior fellow Rebecca Heinrichs, retired Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Rebecca, to you first, and, and ironing out the details of this big summit. The president has sort of tried to low-key expectations here. Others have said uh, it's all but a big meet and greet. The president, in fact, has used that. Um, what do you think of what's going on here and, and sort of the behind-the-scenes stuff going on? I think the president understands just the hurdles that are before them. And, you know, these meetings have been ongoing at the lower level, still at a high level, but lower level, obviously, than the heads of state between North Korea and the United States. And they haven't even agreed on the terms yet. So President Trump understands that. And so I think he's trying to manage expectations a little bit. And something else, too, the media, I keep seeing the media and a lot of analysts say President Trump has just raised the stakes so high that he's got to have a victory here. But really, he's been pretty um, consistent in hedging and saying this may not work out. It might not work out. And no, I'm going to have right to walk that. if it doesn't work out. So yeah. I think I think that's the right take. I think it's right. As long as the president's willing to walk when he understands the North Koreans are not negotiating in earnest, um, then then we still have uh, the leverage and we still have the better hand. You can't help uh, on the left or the right to have high expectations of just this historic powwow, Alan. And I'm wondering, given the fact that the North Koreans have moved uh, to, to, you know, fire top three military advisors and bring in a younger crop, uh, more, I guess, subservient crop, uh, is there your sense here that the North Koreans certainly want to do something? Well, without a doubt, Neil, that uh, the North Koreans want to do something. Mainly, Kim Jong-un wants to do something because a despot and a dictator wants to stay in power. That's his number one goal and, and objective. So as we continue to put pressure on China and try to create a separation, economic separation between the support China can give to North Korea, uh, Kim Jong-un finds himself a little bit uh, much uh, on an island. But also, I think when you look at this summit that's going to be coming up in uh, Shanghai, China, uh, Russia will be there. The Iranians have been uh, invited. The recent meeting with Bashar al-Assad and Kim Jong-un. I think that you see the other side, uh, this new axis of Russia, China, and Iran being very nervous about this position that Kim Jong-un is in and the fact that he is sitting down with President Trump. You know, it seems to be like a one-and-done type of event, Rebecca, and that, that could be good or it certainly could be a little wanting. I mean, uh, the case in, in uh, one Ronald Reagan met with Mikhail Gorbachev. That went on for days in Iceland. Uh, he walked away from that when all of a sudden something was, you know, pushed down his throat. He didn't want it. Uh, but he came back months later and they scored a deal. This is just a one-day event, uh, technically, unless they, they, they stretch it out in Singapore. What are your thoughts about the pressure that creates? It does create a lot of pressure. And, you know, I've been wrong on this before, I, you know, with what President Trump's President Trump's strategy here. Um, I thought whenever he canceled the summit that it was going to be at least a long pause to get the North Koreans back right. on track. But the North Koreans turned and, and had this other conciliatory letter back to President Trump, and then the summit was back on again. Um, so everything is very much in play. It's like watching the sausage being made um, right now between the two countries. So, you know, what I'd like to see happen, I wish that this what, that the photo op wouldn't happen right away. And unless we get something real concrete out of the North Koreans, I really wish that the United States would be careful not to give Kim any sort of additional propaganda victory that can legitimize him and his regime. Um, but, but that might, might in fact be the case. And this is still the lowest, the lowest cost that the United States can, can grant the North Koreans and try to demonstrating that we are interested in negotiating in earnest. This is it. But you're right. I mean, this could just be a one-time thing, and then lower-level negotiations continue, the pressure campaign stays on, and really we end up with the status quo at the end of the president's first term. Guys, thank you uh, all very, very much. Again, we'll get a better idea of that of the White House. Details, uh, plans of this, who's going to be where and when, and how they're going to roll this out in stages. The, the first meet and greet, of course, and then meeting with the leaders of Singapore. Then, of course, the big event itself, uh, the meeting with the North Korean leader.